Okay, good morning. Thank you, Felix, for that. So there is a relationship and a fellowship, right? Relationship and fellowship. They're, they're two different things, aren't they? Um, we have a relationship because of a new birth. That's, that's because we've been born again. Now we are rightly related to God. We are the children of God. Uh, we are children, we're children of God by birth. And in John 15 talks about that fellowship that we have with him because we have this relationship with him. If we didn't have the relationship with him, we couldn't have the fellowship with him. That's why that the, the person who is not saved cannot know the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. They cannot understand them because they take spiritual discernment. It's very interesting. So thank you for that. It was very good, Felix. Um, Let's turn on our Bibles to Genesis 25. <clears throat> I love the golden nuggets that we find in the Bible. I mean, there is just treasures to be held in the Scriptures. Um, and that's why, like, if two or three are gathered together, or five or six are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst with you. This is what Jesus said, right? Right? So, yeah, we have a small church, but hey, you know what? It, that's okay. You know, if we had 150 people in the church, I'd probably go out of my mind. Because <laughs> it just means more problems, more situations, more things, you know? It's like more things, to deal, more situations to deal with. It's like, you know, God knows our capacities, He knows where we stand at. I mean, this is an amazing thing when we think about it. And we, so we just continue on in the faith. Like Paul the Apostle said, that I have kept the faith. I have finished my course with joy. It's like, that's what he was concerned about. And yes, God used him mightily. Oh, yes, God used him in a great way. If it weren't for the Paul the Apostle, I mean, where would Christianity be today? You know? Or John the Apostle who writes, John, which incredible things that are written in there for us, for, for us to grow. And that's what we do. We grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, you know, and going back to what we were saying about earlier about the relationship and the fellowship. Well, this is interesting because in the Bible, there was two sons. They were twins, Esau and Jacob. How many have read the story in the Bible about Esau and Jacob? Okay. Like, if you've read the book of Genesis... This is very interesting because Esau and Jacob, they were, they were twins, but they were, they were not alike at all, were they? They were very different kind of people. Like Esau was this hairy person, and, East, and Jacob, was a, his skin was smooth. Um, and Jacob was a deceiver. It's very interesting. You look at in the Bible, it's like the, the world Christianity today, or, or it has always been, like people of God, it's filled with misfits, isn't it? It's filled with sinners. It's like the word Jacob means um, uh, supplanter. It means he 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 was he d- deceived. He was he was good at that, and he himself got deceived by Laban, his father-in-law. Like like what what goes around comes around, so to say, right? It ends up. You know, I'm not saying it's karma or whatever, but, but that's what ends up happening. Um, we're going to read a couple of scriptures because we want to talk about two things. We want to talk about the birthright. There was a birthright and there was a blessing that came because of the birthright. Now, the birthright and the blessing are not the same thing. They were two different things. But, in, but the birthright here, let's just read it here. Let's go to Genesis 25 and let's start in verse 19. And it says, and these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old, and he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. I mean, what does that mean? I didn't look it up, but I think it means he prayed. He asked God, like, for his wife. And it says that, that because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him. Very interesting in the way it's worded there. Like in other words, like God heard him, and he was he he answered his prayer. It says, "And Rebecca, his wife, conceived, and the children struggled together within her." And she said, 
If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Now that's interesting that God would predict the future, that God would know that what choices that they would make. Very interesting, right? Because it was based upon choice that, that, that they would choose. Um, but God knew this because he knows all things. Um, and then in verse 24, and it says, And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red, all over like, like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came out his brother, came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. So how many have seen this story before in the Bible? Like where, like what, you mean right from the very beginning, like when, when they were in the womb, Jacob was already trying to steal something away from Esau? It was like, this was deeply rooted inside of him, I think. This was, these roots went deep. And so it says here that, um, and, it, and it says, and, and his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was three score years old. For those of you who don't know, one score is 20 years. So three score is what? 60. 60 years. So um, when she bore them. Verse 27, and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunt, hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a, a plain man dwelling in tents. I don't know, what does that mean? Like, Jacob was just kind of like an ordinary kind of a person, right? But Esau, he was a hunter. And it's like, and his father liked that about him. And it says here that, and Isaac, and Isaac loved Esau. That's very interesting, isn't it? Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint therefore, and his name, and his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. So there was red lentil soup. How many have ever had that before? Oh, yeah. We make it in the crock pot. It's very good. And, so, and, and, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. And Esau despised his birthright. So what was the birthright? What was the birthright? Firstborn. Right, yeah. It had to do with the firstborn. It had, and this was actually in the law, in the book of Deuteronomy, which what, this was before the law, wasn't it? So in the book of Deuteronomy, the firstborn was to get a double portion of the inheritance from his father. And he was also supposed to be the leader of the family at the, at, as well. He was supposed to lead his other brothers and be, they would look up to him as being their leader. And so um, it says that he what? He gave it for a a pot of, or a bowl of soup. It's like, wow. So, and, and that's what sin, sin is temporal, isn't it? It is a temporal pleasure. But the things of God are, are, are eternal. And this is what happened. So he sold his birthright. And it's like he says, he despised his birthright, like he didn't care. Like, yeah, whatever. Like, and like he'd reasoned, kind of like Eve did, right? When she saw the fruit, that it was good for food, good to make one wise. And what, what were the three things? Good for food, good to make one wise, and it was pleasing to the eye, right? It was like, like we reason with sin. Oh, yeah, this is, there is some good thing about it somehow. You know, and that's what Esau was doing here. So he, like, he gave his birthright to Jacob, but you know, he, like, he sold it away. And then if we go on, let's, read, let's go to Genesis 27. And we're going to read kind of a long passage here so we understand what's going on here. There's 40 verses here. In Genesis 27.1 it says, And it came to pass when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, 
Behold, now I am old. I know not the days of my death. I, I know not the days of my death. And now, therefore, I pray thee, take weapons that quiver in thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison, and make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah, when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son, and Esau went into the field to hunt, oh, and Rebekah heard when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son, and, and Esau went in the field to hunt for venison and bring it. And Rebekah spoke unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savory meat, that I may eat, and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock, and fetch me from two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou bring, thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father, pre-adventure, will feel me, and shall seem to him as a deceiver, and shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son, only obey my voice, and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of his eldest son Esau, which were her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon in his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. We're in verse 18. And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou biddest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless thee. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my my son, and he said, because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Ooh, he's a liar, isn't he? He's like, and Isaac said unto Jacob, come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. He was a little suspicious there. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, Thou art my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him. And he did eat, and brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him and smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him. Because it had the, the smell of the field, right? It was whatever. It smelled like Esau. Um, and it says, and he, and he blessed him. And he said, see, the smell of my son is in the smell of the field, which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, God, give thee of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that cursed thee, and blessed be he that blessed thee. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, as soon as he made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from hunting, and he and he also had made savory meat. And brought it to his father, and said unto his father, Let my father arise, and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly, and said, Who? Where is he that has taken venison, and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before 
thou camest and blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. Ooh, wow. So what was he saying there? That, you know, he blessed Jacob and Jacob will be blessed. And you know what? Whatever God says, he can't reverse it. Can he? If God says you are to be blessed, it cannot be taken away in reverse. God could not, he cannot reverse what he said. He can only fulfill the things that God has said. And that's why, like, you know, whenever the, 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 the cursing, what was because of what, like, why was Adam cursed? Because of sin. And what was the curse? It was death. If we read in the book of Genesis. And what was the blessing? Eternal life. The blessing was being right with God. That was what was being blessed. That, uh, but blessed is he who sins are, whose sins are covered. Blessed is he to whom the Lord does not impute sin in uh, Psalm 32. And it, so that speaks of our position, doesn't it? Our position that is with God. Blessed is he who do, the Lord does not impute sin. So, so the birthright has to do with our position, but the blessing has to do with our experience that we have. That God, that God has given us these blessings. And what, is the, what does the devil want to do? The devil wants to come in and steal away the blessing, doesn't he? Because Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and life more abundantly. But the, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life. But not life only. Life more abundantly in John 10.10. 10. That was the purpose. The purpose of the devil to kill, to, to, to steal, to destroy, to steal away the blessing. That's why we don't entertain thoughts of the devil. Because although that we're born again, we're saved. We are, we are born again. We are the children of God. That, that yeah, I, I don't walk sometimes in that reality of who I am in Christ. And so let's go on, let's go on to read what else it says here. What, what verse are we at? 34. 34, thank you. I was losing track myself here. We're almost at the end. It says, And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. It said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety. Ooh, that's what the devil does, doesn't he? He comes in with, with subtlety. He got like the, the devil, like he was more subtle the, the, than any of the other, the, the, the other creatures. And, it, and that's, uh, that, that's, what did Paul write? That I fear that as Satan beguiled Eve through his subtlety, that your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. Wow. That's what the devil does. It's like, you know, it's just a little thing. I mean, it's just what? It's just a pot of stew. It's just a, you know, it's just a, some fruit off a tree. Not a big deal. You know, and that's why that the law had to come in to make sin that it would appear sin to make it exceedingly sinful so that we could see that our need for a savior. We were talking with some people yesterday. We were when we went mountain biking, we hang out afterwards. And, you know, I, I, and I said something there. I said, you know, you know what the qualification is to go to heaven? Yeah, you have to be a sinner. And one guy was like, <laughs> what? I don't make it. I thought you had to be righteous. I thought you had to be a good person. Right. It's like. No, you have to be a sinner. Jesus said, I came for sinners, not for the righteous. Ah, I have to know that I'm a sinner in order to be saved. I have to see the need for salvation, you know? And that's why the law came in, to make sin that it would appear sin. That every mouth would be stopped and what? The whole world would become guilty before God. And if I'm guilty, I need to be redeemed. I need to be saved. It's like, wow. So Jesus, the Savior of the world, there he is. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Amazing. So let's, let's read on here. Where are we at here, Pastor Chris? Okay, verse 36. Thank you. It says, oh, verse 35. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety and has taken away thy blessing. Woo! That's what the devil does. Verse 36. And he said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? <laughs> For he has supplanted me these two times. Ooh, because that's what his name means, right? Supplanter. It's interesting how the names mean something, right? Like, uh, yeah, it'd be like supplanter. It means like it's, it's someone who deceives. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. It's like, wow, Noah got drunk. Jacob deceived people. Moses had an anger problem. It's like, but yet, so it wasn't because of sin, was it? 
They, it was because of the righteousness of God. It's like, wow, they believed. They believed, in, they believed in Jesus. They believed in a coming Messiah. And it was accounted, Abraham, who maybe seems like maybe, you know, he's, he failed too, didn't he? There was like what he didn't believe, the father of faith. There was times when he didn't believe what he needed to grow. So God, God tested him, obviously. Why did it last so Why would the test last so long? It was for Abraham's sake, so that he could learn to grow in, in faith, which pleases God. And it says here that uh, in verse 36, okay, and is he not rightly named Jacob, for he has supplanted me these two times? He took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessing. That's why they're two different things. And he said, Has thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac said it to him, said it to Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord in all his brethren. Have I given to him for servants and with corn and with wine and, and in wine have I sustained him? And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by the sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. Ha! That'll sound like a blessing to me. But, but there is a blessing. And it shall come to pass that when, they, when thou shalt have dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So, you know, there, there is a blessing that God has blessed us with. If we turn to John chapter 1, real quick. John chapter 1, God has blessed us, and, but the blessing comes because of who we are. We've been blessed by God. We are blessed people because of... But if you weren't born again, if you weren't saved, if you weren't a part of the family of God, how could we have the blessing? How could we have the mind of Christ? How could we walk in the Spirit if we don't have the Spirit? We wouldn't be able to. And the blessing, as we said before, comes because what? We are right with God. We are righteous. We are righteous. And the Bible says, as we said before in Psalm 32, that it speaks about our position there, right? Right? that blessed is he whose sins, that the Lord does not impute sin. But in Psalm chapter 1, it says, Blessed is he who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his, in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water, whose leaf does not, does not wither, and gives forth its fruit in its season. And if you read also Jeremiah 17, it says, Blessed is he who does not trust in the arm of man, but trust, but trust in the Lord. And it talks about being, once again, planted and, and having fruit, as like John 15 brings out, that we can bear fruit as a result. That's the blessing. That's the blessing. because, because So the blessing there has to do with the experience that we have that's in God, that's in Christ. Actually, and it says here in John chapter one. Um, let's see if I can find it. Let's see. Um, in verse twelve, <clears throat> it says, "But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood." nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now this, this says, but as many as received him, he gave them power. The word is exousia in the Greek. And it means, it means authority, or it means that, that, what's the word I'm looking for? It means authority, but it means, um, it has to do with the fact that because we're the children of God, because of the fact that we are the children of God, that he, he gave them power, that's the right, so to say, the power, the, the authority, the right to become like the birthright. Like, like we've been given this birthright 
And so because we, are, we, are, we have this, this with God because of who we are, because of who we are, if we walk in who we are, if we know who we are in Christ, if we believe that, then we're able to receive the blessing that God has by faith. Does this make sense? Yeah. Because of this? He, like, he gave us the right to what? what are, who are we? We're the children of God. The children of God. Who am I? I'm the child of God. And what does the child of God do? He, he loves God because love, God loves him. That's the reason why the child of God does, he has respect unto God, respect unto his father, like Jesus who respected his father. You say, what does this mean? Like, like sin is disrespectful to God in a sense, isn't it? It's like, wow. If we love one another, then, then it's respectful to God because how can you love God? How can you say that you love God and then hate your brother? Because if you say that, then you're, and it's not true. You're a liar, actually, the Bible says in 1 John. If you say that you love God and hate your brother, you're a liar. And the truth is not in that person. They don't walk in it. They may be born again. They may be saved. But they don't know love. Because whosoever loves has been born of God and knows God, too. That's the evidence. Yeah, you're born of God. But it's, but it's more than that. You actually know God. You know him. And, and, and here is the evidence. So, so we walk in that blessing. It says we were born, what? Not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The new birth. And if we turn to Ephesians chapter 1. This is really good here. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. We're in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. What kind of blessings do we get? Spiritual. Not talking about like winning the lottery. Although, Bonnie, we're praying. Because <laughs> we know you're going to tithe on that. We're praying for it. But, God, but, but we, would talk that, we would look at that as a spiritual blessing, right? Yes. Spiritual. It's like, uh, you know, it, it, it's like he has blessed us with how many spiritual blessings? Every. All of them. All spiritual blessings. All things are yours, it says in the Bible. All things. It's like, wow. The riches of his grace. And it says, and where are they? In the heavenlies. In other words, it's spiritual blessings in the heavenlies because what? we are seated above in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. But what does it say here? It says you're, the spiritual blessings are in Christ. In Christ. That's because of we're born again. And if we weren't in Christ, we wouldn't be able to experience the spiritual blessings that are with God. We wouldn't be able to, that we wouldn't have that's the... The, the, we, were, we wouldn't be partakers of the divine nature through the knowledge of him who has called us to his own glory and virtue. We become partakers of this. It's his own nature. Uh, and then this is interesting because it goes on because verses 3 through 13 is actually one, one sentence in the Greek. One complete sentence. It's like, wow. It's like, that's interesting. Because... The blessings have to do with being in Christ. And it says, between those verses, it says ten times to be in Christ. To be in Him, or to be in Christ. Ten times. This is where we get the blessings at. Because we are in Christ. And it says here, it says in verse 4, it says, According as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Wow. And why did He choose us? Because he foreknew that we would choose him in Romans 8.29. Because before he do, for whom he did foreknow, them he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. So he foreknew us, just like he foreknew that, that, that Esau and Jacob, there was, there was, there was going to be that, what their choices were going to be as well. Very interesting. So, and he has chosen us in him. 
before the foundation of the world, that what, what's the blessing? That we are holy, that we are without blame. That we are holy before Him in love, even though I commit sin. See, there is my, there is my position that I have that's in Christ. The position is I am holy. Your position is you are holy. You are justified. You are even glorified with God, even though that hasn't happened yet. But in, the, in God's mind, you are, because it is going to happen. You will have a new body. You will be in heaven. You will, be, you will live forever with God. We will be glorified. The old sin nature will be taken away. And he has chosen to send him before the foundation of the world. If we look at verse 5, it says, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Of his will. The adoption there has to do with the fact that, that we were not previously part of the children of God. We were not of the family. But a lot of times the adoption, like the adopted child, a lot of times gets more than the actual child that was born by birth. Uh, we were watching uh, but, 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 <laughs> Bonanza a long time ago, and you know, Haas and um, Little Joe, like, like uh, Ben brought out, what was his name? J- J- Jamie. His name was Jamie. Was, did you see that, 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 that certain episode? Did you see that one? So he brought Jamie out to, there was carved on a tree. It said Haas. There was like, it said Haas and Little Joe. And then uh, Ben says, why don't you go carve your name in the tree too? Because he was part of the family. He was adopted. He wasn't born into the family. And it was like he was accepted. And we're accepted because we're adopted children. That's amazing when we think about. It. And we have all the rights, all the privileges as the child that was by birth. And although, yeah, you can say, well, yeah, we were also born into the family because we were born again into a new birth. Um, and then it says, verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. Wow. We are accepted. What? Who's the beloved one? Jesus. We are accepted in Him, and we are loved. The ones that are loved, kerato, is the the Greek word. Beloved, we have been graced by God. He has given us this, this, and it says, and this brings us to what? To the praise of the glory of His grace. We it results in our praising God. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And then in verse 7, it says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. And that word redemption, apolutrosis, it means to, that, to set free upon the payment of a ransom. To set free. To set free from the power of sin. Every born-again believer has been set free from sin. But yet we, we allow the devil to come in and steal away the blessing. The devil to come in to, because I cannot love God and love the world at the same time. It's not possible. Because it says, that, what does it say? If any man loves, loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If any man loves the world, the love of the, because all that is in the world... The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is not of the Father. Ah, that's the reason why. Love, it comes from the Father. Um, and then it says, We have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. The riches of His grace. Here's the blessing. The blessing that God has blessed us with. Verse, verse 8 it says, Wherein He has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. You know, like God has revealed to us all things. That's amazing that, we, that you can know the Bible, that you can know the things of God. Isn't that incredible? Because you know what? Just go out into the world. Talk to people. They know nothing. They know nothing at all about this. Even Christians who have been around for a long time. They do not know. They do not know simple things in the Bible. And that's why we dig deep into the Bible. We can even know the deep things of God in 1 Corinthians 2.10. How valuable is that? Who revealed that truth to you? 
It wasn't Pastor Chuck, although I said it, but God's the revealer of the truth because you have the Holy Spirit in you. And if you didn't have the Holy Spirit, you would never understand what I would have to say up here. You would never. God is our teacher. We have an unction from the Holy One, and we know all things. It says in 1 John, <laughs> I, I don't know all things, but I can have the potential to know that, to know all things, because the one who knows all things lives in me and lives in you. It's like, wow, we can have this knowledge of God. This is incredible. That's why we seek for wisdom. We, we, we seek for God because he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And what's the reward? Himself. What a reward. Just like God, God appeared to Abram, said one day, he said, I behold, Abraham, I am your great and exceeding reward. Whoa. It's like, wow. That's why we come to church. That's why we grow in grace. That's why we study the Bible so that we can know him, to know him. Not to know a bunch of knowledge, but to know him. Yes, we should get knowledge. You should learn the Bible. Learn what Aris tense means. Learn these things because we're students. But it goes deeper than that. It goes deeper. It goes to knowing him. And when we love one another, with a, with a pure heart fervently, as it says in 1 Peter 1.22, that's when we know him. That's when we know him. And so it says here, um, verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him. In verse, verse 11, in whom we have, an, an, we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things under the counsel of his own will. And this is exactly what God does. He makes things that are wrong, he makes them right, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. We see all through the Bible, that's what he does. God's about justice. Justice. And we have been, what does the Bible say? Justified, declared righteous declared holy, declared that by, by God, if God has said it, if God said it, then can it be taken away? If God said that God has proclaimed you righteous, boom, God has proclaimed you justified in God's courtroom. And then God the judge no longer is our judge, but he is now our father because the relationship with him has changed. And because now we have this relationship with him, not as our judge, but as our father, then our Father teaches us, and it's through Christ. And now we have this fellowship with God that we've never had, we never experienced before. I know when I got saved, it was, I never prayed before I got saved. I never, like, thought about praying. I just always thought, I never thought about it, but I guess that I thought that if I was good, I would go to heaven. If I was bad, I would go to hell. And even after I got saved, I still kind of had that in my mind until someone brought it to my attention that I am eternally secure. I was like, whoa, I better check that doctrine out. See if that's right. But it was like, but it made sense. It made sense. And God revealed that truth. And so it's like, and so let's, let's read on. We have obtained an inheritance. That's what the blessing does, the inheritance. The inheritance has not to do with entrance into heaven. The inheritance has to do with the result of what God has blessed us with. Verse 11. Yeah. Verse 11. Yeah. The inheritance has to do with that. And so, verse 12, it says that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Verse 13, in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. It's like, wow, what happened? We've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. Is that a blessing? It's like, wow. That's a, wow. Okay, I mean, you know, they, they, like, you know, there's churches who make an emphasis on the gifts, but we make an emphasis on Christ because the Holy Spirit points to Christ. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Not to point to the gifts, although we believe in gifts. We believe there are spiritual gifts. But they are given for what? 
For the edification of the body of Christ, which means what? So that the body of Christ, so we can love one another in a special way that we never experienced before. And what did Jesus say? Blessed is he, blessed is, is more blessed to give than to receive. It's like we receive a blessing by operating in our gifts. And we begin to, to walk, we begin to understand our calling and our purpose on this earth is what? To manifest Christ. That's our purpose. To love one another. That's our purpose. Um, and then it says um, that because we, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the earnest of our inheritance, the down payment that guarantees our salvation until the redemption of the purchased possession. Who is that? That's you and me. It's the church. Because he purchased the church with his own blood in Acts 20, 28. We were bought with the price. We are not our own. And, you know, like in the Old Testament, like a slave that was given the opportunity to, they could have his ear pierced. And the, the piercing of the ear had to do with his, he had a good master. Because he was willing on his own to come back, to, to be a willing slave to the master. Because his master was good. If his master treated him badly, he wouldn't have, by choice, got the earring put in there in his ear. And people would see that earring and they would say, you have a good master. And so and that's the way we are with Christ because we have the marks of Christ. We have the marks of Christ that God has put on us so that we, that when people see us because we love one another, how shall they know that you are my disciples? Because you love one another. In John 13, 35, that's the mark. The world doesn't have this. The world doesn't have this love. As you know, just turn the TV on. There's World War III about to happen. There, is like, there are things happening in this world that is because of sin, the root of it. It's what it says in James. Where, does, where do wars come from? Because of sin. That's the reason why. Because men are about themselves. People are all their selfishness about themselves. Why does one country invade another country to get their land? Because they're about themselves. Don't care about other people. That's the reason why. So, and that's it. Well, we're not like that. We're different. We, we understand love. They, so much so because Christ came and loved us while what? We were sinners? While we were ungodly? In Romans chapter 5, verse 6, 5, verse 8, and 5, verse 10, says that while we were even, even his enemies... Christ died for us. That's the love of God. And though he sheds that love abroad in our hearts by the what? The Holy Spirit, whom is given unto us. In Romans 5.5, 5, here is the blessing. The blessings. I mean, the Bible talks about the manifold grace of God, poikilos. It means grace on every side. And it's like, and it's so much so, it's like, like how many colors are there, right? Well, there's seven colors in the rainbow. Not six. I say that for a reason because the 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 L G T whatever it is rainbow has six colors, which is yeah it's not we have there's actually seven colors in the rainbow and there's seven notes in this the music scale which is very interesting. It's the proof of God, you know. But there are many colors. There are many different facets. There are the, the graces all around us. Everywhere we look, that God has blessed us. Like he blessed Abraham and everything that he did in his life. And he blessed Jacob, who what, stole the blessing. He blessed him. It's like, wow. He sought for the blessing. He was always about getting blessed. He wrestled with God. God blessed him. He sought for it. It's like, wow. He fought for it. And it's like, and that's what we do. We look for the blessing. We, we, like, like, we, we don't steal it away, but, but God gives it to us, and we see it everywhere. The blessing of God. It's here. It's today. It's on this day. We are blessed. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The blessing is now. As we said before, we look over the good old days. You know, back in 1974. It's like, no, today is the good old days. Today, right now. Today, right now. We're going to be talking about this day 25 years from now. It's like, you know, back in 2023, whoo, those were great days. Remember that? It's like, wow. 
you know, April 2nd, 2023, what an awesome day. 10% chance of rain, but it was a beautiful day. You know, this was the day. So amen? Amen. Okay, so let's pray. So Father, we thank you so much that you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We thank you that you love us. We thank you for the word of God and we trust you. It never returns void. We believe the truth. We believe what you've said about yourself and about us, what you've made us, who we are, our position, and our experience that we have. We just want to give anybody an opportunity. If you've never accepted Jesus, accept him today as your Savior. It's the gift of God. Accept him. You can say a simple prayer like this. Just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm not good enough to go to heaven. But you died for me. You paid the penalty of all my sins. Save me. I want to be born again. I want to go to heaven when I die. Save me, Jesus. And if you've accepted Jesus today as your Savior, please give me a call. Love to talk with you about your faith. 727-452-7445. 727-452-7445. Give me a call. No matter what year it is, that phone number should still be valid. And then also, we do have Sunday morning services here in Clearwater, Florida, 1030 a.m., and we have Bible studies uh, every Thursday, 7. Love for you to join us and just come and just hang out and just be blessed. Amen? Amen. Okay, so now is the wrap, as our tradition holds. <laughs> Go ahead, Bonnie. Um, how the twins, right? The father worship, you know, was favorite to one, and then the mother was favorite to the other. Right. Yeah. That you see that all the time, don't you? Yeah, and it's kind of, yeah. And like you know, and so in Isaac, like he loved Esau because of he brought him food, brought him venison. Right. Yeah. I, know. I mean, it's like and, and you know. Yeah, it is. And then, you know, Rebecca was, you know... With, yeah, it's the typical family. And she was just... It's like... like <laughs> I know, and it's kind of like, wow. And it it's, happens today, too. Oh, yeah. Big time it happens. And it's favoritism. It's today than it, it was yeah. back then. Right. But I thought that was kind of crazy. Yeah. Pastor. Yes. Um, Esau said to his father, Do you only have but one blessing. Yeah. But the thing is that before, before uh, chapter 37, <clears throat> verse 38, Esau has sold his birthrights from the get-go. So why was he now saying, well... You only have but one blessing. He was seeking for anything he could. And he did get a blessing. But it was a much lesser... You know, and you can look at it this way. I didn't bring this up, but it's like... But the world has... There's common grace that everybody has, even the unsaved. It's like, you know, like, you know, people have money, they have food, they have jobs, they have... I mean, that's all given by grace. They're not saved. You know? Yeah, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. So it's like, and so, like, so he got blessed, but it wasn't, it was far less than what the firstborn should have gotten. Far less. Because he wasn't, you know, so to say, he, he gave it, he sold, he gave it away. He sold it away. It's like, because he didn't care for it then. Yeah, he didn't care. He didn't care so much about. The, the, the birthright, but when it came down to the blessing time, he cared a lot about that. He cared a whole lot about that. 
He saw it with tears. But once Isaac had said what he said, he couldn't change it back. And you know, you see a recurring theme in the Bible that whenever Jacob got older, was it, no, it, was it Isaac? It was, no, it was Jacob. Yeah, Jacob, when he got older, that Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And so they were to be blessed by Jacob. And he was supposed to bless the older one. But what did he do? He crossed his hands and blessed the younger one instead of the older one. And like, Jacob was like, what are you doing? You know, but that's what he did. It was like this recurring thing. And you know, you see that a whole lot. You study it sometime in the Bible. Like, is the blessed, the older one's always supposed to, to get it, but you see many times that the younger one gets it. Like, Joseph was the youngest out of the 12, right? But he was the one, actually, Rebecca's child. Right? No, um, no, I was, what was. Oh, okay, maybe you're right. Maybe it was Benjamin. I think you're right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, anyway, yeah. So, but, but anyway. You have problems with why would God bless someone who was deceitful to get the blessing? Yeah. I mean, if, 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 if God had spoken to his mother, like he did to 